Hi, I'm Hillary, and this is Book Bustle, where I talk about books and reading while I'm getting things done around the house. I just put some soup on the stove, and um, I started kind of looking at this board, and it's getting dry, so I've got some mineral oil. I'm just rubbing it into the wood just to kind of condition it. And while I do that, I'll just tell you about some books that um, I wanted to share, books I read recently, and tell you what I think about them. So the first book on my list is a, um, a novel by Caleb Azuma Nelson. It's called Open Water. It's, um, it's a really beautiful book. There's a lot of kind of lyrical language in the book. Um, it's about two black British artists. One is a photographer. He's the, the person telling the story. In a, in a way, I'll talk about that in just a second. And then um, he meets this woman who's a, who's a dancer. And um, it's, a, it's a very interesting kind of take on the storytelling idea because it, it comes through in second person, so to, to you, you know, it's written to kind of to you. And um, I think that's an interesting choice. I'm not sure for me that it was totally successful. I think what the author intended was for the reader to kind of be drawn in and see themselves in the situation that the, um, that the narrator is describing. But I found it a little bit like, it almost made the whole thing feel kind of hypothetical. Like, it's hard to explain, but it, it kept me distant a little bit from the characters. You, you never find out their names. Um, I think there's maybe one or two characters who are named in the book, but it's not the narrator or his love interest. And so between that and the kind of second person narration, although the book is really beautiful, there are some passages I did highlight a lot <laughs> I, because some of it is so poetic and lovely. Um, and inspiring and, and like an interesting slant on things. But I did find the second person choice to be a little bit distancing just for me. Um, it is a lot about kind of vulnerability, what it is, feels like to be, to go through life in, um, in this kind of state of, of vulnerability that um, that black males especially experience because it's it's unlike the the vulnerability that I feel sometimes as a woman um, especially when I was younger I felt very kind of exposed and visible and um, you know you you do feel physically at a disadvantage but I think for for black men it's almost like the opposite, people kind of can fear a black men, and so it puts them in a state of vulnerability that um, th that is, you would be approaching that vulnerability from kind of the opposite direction from what I personally experience, you know, going through life. And so there's, there's a really interesting, um, kind of point of view for me to experience, and I enjoyed that a lot. And like I said, the writing is really beautiful, and I still gave it four stars. I think it's, a, it's an amazing book, um, very, very well worth reading. And you may have a different experience about that second person choice, um, which I can, I can really understand. I think, um, I think it probably could go in two different ways, where you could either feel very much more drawn into the book or kind of pulled out of the book, which is unfortunately kind of how I felt, but I will read it again probably. I always read books more than once. <laughs> I, that's probably weird. I, I should probably address that. I don't really know why I, I always do that. It's almost like the first read through is um, a get to know you <laughs> between me and the book. Um, and it does mean that I, I don't read as widely as I, as I could, um, but 
I do find that I'm just interested in going back through books and, and trying again and seeing what new things I find. It's, it's almost like a relationship develops between me and the book. <laughs> so anyway, I, I definitely recommend that book and I think you should kind of see for yourself what you, um, what you feel about those characters and whether you feel um, closer or, or a little bit more distanced by that choice. Um, another one I read by Ann Tyler is called um, Redhead by the Side of the Road. And I read it at the same time as I was reading um, Leonard and Hungry Paul. And I do find sometimes that there's similarities in books that um, sometimes I tend to read the same type of book at the same time, like which is kind of what happened with those books. So Leonard and Hungry Paul is about a male friendship um, over between two kind of men who are very gentle souls and both living at home with their parents and, and you know, the, the kind of found family and friendship and stuff like that. Redhead by the Side of the Road is a, a bit darker. The, um, the main character is... Um, I believe his name is Micah, and he's he's had a breakup with his girlfriend, and he's trying to come to terms with who he is and what he wants and how he relates to other people. He's not a self-aware kind of person, and he is um, he has almost like a little bit of a breakdown when this breakup happens, and. I thought it was really well written. The character unfolded in a really interesting way. Um, and it did, it did have a lot of resemblance to me with that other story, uh, that Ronin Hessian story. Um, there's a, I think a little bit too quick of a pivot at the end of Redhead by the Side of the Road. Um, it's almost like the, the author knew where she wanted that book to go and she, she kind of steered it instead of really letting the character, uh, the change in the character unfold a little bit more slowly, which I think not a lot, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a terrible pace. It's just that it kind of leapt to the end a little bit sooner than I was expecting. So it was still really good. I would say like three and a half stars maybe for that one. Um, and then I read um, An Artist of the Floating World by um, Katsu Ishiguru. Um, I'm trying to get through his whole backlist because I am a fan. Um, this book is about uh, an elderly Japanese man who um, he, he was an artist in his young days, and I think what I understand happened is that he began to, um, to produce propaganda during the Second World War in favor of the, uh, of the government. And it doesn't go into a lot of detail about what that artwork entailed or, or um, what it was exactly that he was producing, it doesn't really describe the art that much. It describes Google's reaction to the art, and he, the character is kind of going back and forth through time, and he's talking about, um, you know, people's reactions to him. And he, he has his own um, kind of pride and his own sense of self, and it is, a lot of the people's reactions from his, from his daughters, from people he knows, uh, people who have known him in the past, you see their reactions and then his reaction to their reactions, <laughs> which isn't always like appropriate. Like he's, he's missing things. You, you totally get the sense that he's not understanding um, his role and people's reactions to him. And he continually refers to himself as this very esteemed person, this very um, honored kind of person, and 
how, you know, he's, he's everybody's sensei, it seems. But, um, but the book kind of takes place around him trying to get support for his daughter's marriage to another family. And it's almost like there's a reference check going on. <laughs> so he's, he's revisiting people who, um, who he's known in the past, and he's trying to get them to give a good reference, basically, <laughs> for, for his daughter's uh, marriage. And um, so you see kind of his, um, you know, him revisiting people he's known in the past. And um, he has kind of, very little seems to be understanding of <laughs> <laughs> of his effect on the world or the lack of, of effect or kind of his, um, you know, his place in the world as he understands it is not really what everyone else understands. And I found it a little bit hard to follow. I think this might have been Ishiguro's first novel, first published novel. I'm not 100% I'm not sure about that, but it feels like an early book. Um, it feels like a lot like um, The Remains of the Day, which is another of his books that I just love. <laughs> I, thought that, I think that is an amazing book. This one feels like maybe a first attempt, and I, and I think I did listen to that one on audio, and it the choice of narrator I don't think really works. I really prefer, it, all the characters are Japanese. The, the story takes place in Japan, and there's a the narrator is a very has a very particular um, upper class British accent, and it it just for me it really kept pulling me out. The I, it just it was not a good match. I think so. Um, it might have been more a little bit more successful to me as a you know just reading a paper version or a ebook version of that, but. Um, still really good, just not as good as some of the other books of his that I have loved. Um, and that brings me to Demon Copperhead. Um, you've probably already read Demon Copperhead, so I'm not sure what else I can add to the conversation. Um, that one is by Barbara Kingsolver. I think it won the Pulitzer this last year, and... The voice of that book is just fabulous. The voice that she is able to maintain over time. It had, it, I kept bringing back like S.E. Hinton to me, the Outsiders books. Uh, not because the regionally there's nothing in common with them at all, but it is a young male voice and a first person voice. Um, Demon Copperhead is a young man in um, kind of a, a difficult, he's, he's a, has a difficult childhood to say the least. <laughs> he's, I think he runs away at like 11 years old or something. He, it's just a constant kind of tragic situations that this child finds himself in. Um, He's a wonderful character because he's, in spite of everything that he goes through, the character is so, um, he, he's so attached to his home. I think it's like a it's an Appalachian kind of region. Um, it's hot. And uh, his mother is, is an addict. He kind of grows up in this very, I don't know, I, I guess you would say uh, it goes from kind of neglect to, to, you know, to abuse. There's a lot of drug use in the book from the character and, you know, everyone around him. Um, it kind of explores the early days of the opioid epidemic when people thought that opioids were, you know, a miracle cure for chronic pain and harmless, uh, which is obviously not the case. So, um, so there's a lot about that. I think it's a it's quite a long book. I have a trouble sometimes with the long books because I think sometimes the author, and in this case, it's understandable. Like she's probably following along with David Copperfield, you know, the um, 
the kind of original source material for this storyline, which I haven't read, so I, I can't really speak to how well it goes along, you know, alongside that. But I felt like in the middle, um, there's a lot of characters that come into the middle of the book. And uh, for me, it got a little bit bogged down in the middle just because there were so many characters kind of coming in and I found it hard to keep track of them. I read it as a hardcover version, so I could kind of go back and try to find these people again and try to keep track, but I, I, it did kind of take me out. I just feel like, and there's one character who comes in at the very end, like a big, big climactic scene in the book, and he's he kind of comes out of left field for me. I, I wasn't really clocking his relationship to the other characters. I felt like that was maybe a missed opportunity to bring him in earlier and make him more a part of the earlier story. So that part wasn't so successful to me, but the book as a whole is, is a masterpiece, really. It's um, just for the voice alone. The voice is very distinctive and very interesting and very much of its place. And I like the whole idea of um, trying to come to some understanding of, about why people in this poor environment with very little opportunity stay there. And it's because that's home, you know, this is where their people are. This is the, this is the environment that they love. They don't want to leave because they love this place. They, this is their, their home. This is their roots. They don't want to be, um, removed and sent somewhere else to try to make their way. They're trying to, to, um, to stay, you know, in, with their roots and be part of that. And, um, it's very, it's a very deep need for, for people. So anyway, I thought that part, it's just, it was really well done. Um, my, you know, like I said, I just have a kind of a minor quibble or two with it, but, um, just overall an excellent book and, there's probably nothing I can really add to it that you haven't heard before because that, that book is making the rounds. And then last one um, is a book called Deep Water. It was a Patricia Highsmith book. Um, I'm kind of of two minds about Highsmith. Uh, there's a lot to love about that book, but man, did it, were there off you know, like a lot of dinner parties? <laughs> I felt like there wasn't, I just felt like uh, it was a hard book to understand for me. It was a hard book for me to, um, there was no one really to fall in love with in the book. There weren't any characters I really cared about. The, the narrator is this kind of cuckolded husband whose wife is, apparently has permission to kind of, um, you know, go outside the marriage and have affairs and things like that. But it's not real because the, the character is um, quietly fuming the whole time. The main kid, you know, the husband, the main character telling the story, just fuming the whole time, kind of does his best to get in the way of her dalliances and kind of insert himself into, um, you know, like she'll have somebody over and she really just wants to be with that person at the end of the night, but he won't go to bed and just leave them alone. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. There, but there's no reason that I could understand why the wife would not want to divorce him. I can't. I still don't really understand. I mean, even, even in the 50s, like it, there just isn't a good reason for these two people to be together. The, I felt like she was telling me the character you know, is attached or possessive or something that he feels about his wife, but I felt like she was just kind of trying to sell me that idea, and I couldn't understand why anyone would love her anyway. She just seemed awful, <laughs> and so was he. Everyone was awful <laughs> in this book. I didn't like any of the people, and I didn't, um, you know, the whole kind of psychological thriller part is always something I'm going to like. Um, the, the character, the main character, commits a murder and then another murder and, <laughs> and um, you know, he's going, he's going sideways. You can see that coming a mile away, uh, but I just couldn't really understand what the point of these two characters trying to stay together even would be. And the poor child in this book was just like a forgotten piece of the 
marriage that um, it didn't seem like anybody really cared about as more than a prop. So I don't, I don't love that book. <laughs> I did my best with it. I'm not going to try that one again. It's just uh, kind of like one, one dinner party too many <laughs> for me. <laughs> and she can do better. I know she can. She's, she was an amazing writer. Anyway, that's all I've got. My, my board, if you could feel it, it feels very satiny and lovely and um, ready for me to chop something else on. <laughs> so I hope you have a really good day. Um, I hope you visit again and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.